welcome to my channel it's Rebecca also known as 4kids147 and I'm going to do a mini whipping chat with you today and um, this is because the lovely Elaine has um, sent me some of her spare diamonds for colours that I didn't have um, or maybe ones that I didn't quite have um, enough um, to complete the whole painting according to um, the drill sheet from Heaven and Earth Designs. So for each design you do get a sheet that tells you how many, um, in this case is how many stitches, full stitches are needed for the design, um, but in turn that's how many DMC, um, sorry, how many drills are needed. Um, so yes, yeah, she's kindly sent me some of her spares and in with those are six colours that I didn't have but needed. Now bear in mind she has sent me some that also have either given me enough that I had a few um, and there are some that I didn't have um, and I've been able to tick off my list. But there is a group of six that I have needed for this painting. So, um, exciting times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill in some of the gaps on this design. Um, what I've also done is I did find that actually not having the 10 by 10 grid was, wasn't as easy as it could have been. There are times that I've wanted to sort of go into the next grid with an odd colour um, and not wanted to do it for fear of, of not being able to keep track. So um, I have this um, permanent marker. If anybody knows where else to get this thin a permanent marker, please let me know. I've had this one for a few years, which I use um, primarily, it sits with my cross stitch um, so that I can label my bobbins. Um, but I've actually used it on here, just by hand, um, to line out the 10 by 10. It's a 0.75 mil and it's a permanent marker in black. So it's really, oh, can't even see that. Hang on, which way am I going? That way, <laughs> let's put it on white. Um, it's really, really thin. Um, say it's 0.75 mil. Um, I do remember going for a hump for one a while ago, but not actually really finding one that works. So if anybody knows a brand that I should be searching for, let me know. Um, so yeah, I have started to grid off now um, my 10 by 10 blocks. And I'm just drawing that line straight onto the canvas um, to allow me to possibly work in bigger blocks. What I've also done is I have um, opened up the design on my Mac, on my MacBook, um, and marked off or highlighted the colours that I've done. I'm going to try using that instead of my chart, so just so you know why that's in the corner. Um, it does allow me to have the symbols bigger. Um, I know many people will use um, an app for an iPad for this. Um, however, the iPad that we have in our house is primarily used by my husband. Um, it's primarily used for him to watch um, TV or something upstairs if the kids have taken over downstairs. So if I start using that, I then don't want the whole he needs it I want to do some of this so I'm just trying to use I'm just using preview on my Mac and seeing how that goes so anyway I digress there are two things that I did yesterday so let's have a look at some of these symbols now the heart which is 760 is the one I got very excited about because I do know I need quite a few of these and that's sort of the first colour that I've hit when I've come to these symbols at the top. So this one on its own here, that's a heart. Oh, and I've just refilled my wax, so it's spurting wax everywhere. And then if I come, and this is where it can get a little bit tricky. So I've got those three, and I've got two, and then that one. Is a heart. Mark that one off. 
Sorry, I've just got the little whirl icon. This is going to be fun if it keeps doing that, isn't it? So that's that one. Ah, and then the next ones actually go here. So we've got one here, another one here, and another one here. And when it stops whirling round, there we go, two, three. I mean, it may not be the best program for it, for viewing it. Did that third one actually go in? Because I just realized I still have one attached to my pen. No, it didn't. That could have been fun. Find out what the missing symbol is. Okay, so these are ones that I may or may not still be missing. Okay, so to move down this one here, is a heart. I've got some wax off the top. It's taken a while to colour that one in as well. Okay, and then if we move over, these two here are both hearts. So that's another nice little gap. That whole cluster now is all filled in. Just keep moving over and marking them off on my chart. And then if I move over here, we've got a little cluster of two and then one underneath. And then over in this far cluster is also a heart. Just want to throw those over, they seem to be a bit smaller. And then in this sort of M symbol, so those two, this is going to drive me batty if I keep getting the circle symbol on preview all the time. I think it's just saving it to be honest, but I don't want that every time I go to click something. Okay, so I've moved down to the next batch and here there is loads. Okay, so let's start from over here because I've got something of easy reference, which is a little sort of um, triangle cluster of three. And then I actually want this one here, which I will mark off when it allows me to. And then I want this one up here. And then to follow along this cluster of two, both the hearts, and then we've got this one, and this one, and this one. So that's filled in the hearts on that cluster, which hopefully my Mac will now let me colour those in. Okay, to move over to this section. So I'm sort of still working across in the 10 strips. And actually what I could do to make it a little bit easier is move that over. And that would give me a reference point. So I've got one. Then that one. And that one. So that's those three there. And the max frozen up. Okay, so what I can do now is move that over again. And by holding that down, that actually gives me the reference as to what is the line of 10. So that should make it a little bit easier to see. So then I've got two down here. So that fills in that nice little cluster though. That one's popping out. Get back in. <coughs> okay, my Mac's going to let me colour those other ones in. So let me just do those. And then I'll do the two I've just done. Okay. So we've got one here. And then that one. And that one. 
so it's another three. Oh, Mac, if you keep doing this, I might have to try and see if I can just maybe pull up one page at a time in preview. Um, I think it's trying to save the whole document, which is the whole cross-stitch file. Um, I think that's what it's trying to do, is to sort of save what I've done. Okay, so I'm actually on this 10 by 10 square here at the moment. And I've already coloured that one in, so that's the next one I need to do. Okay, and then there's quite a few in this 10 by 10 square here. So I've got my line down here as well. So we've got that single one on its own. And then we have one, two three, four, every time I go to click on it, it goes, I'm just going to save, okay, this is going to drive me batty as well as you guys, okay, let's move on to the next square, and it actually wants the one up here. And then the next one is here. And here. It's not even gonna let me slide. <sighs> colour those in then and then to slide across that one is a different colour and then to go down so now we're on around this section we've got another three so I've got one two three and then I actually didn't have any in this square That's saving, I'll mark those off. So I'm going to keep this out because I've probably missed some. But what we'll do is we'll move on to the next one. So this one is 304. I don't think I have many of these. So I'm not going to tip that many out. So I don't remember there being too many of them. It may actually only be a matter of one or two. Come on. Yeah. I'm not enjoying watching this circle thing go round, so I'm guessing you guys probably aren't either. So I'm definitely going to have to work something out for that. Otherwise, whip and chats are going to get very frustrating. Okay, so there is one of this up on this section. So I'm going to pop that there, and that may the only one. I can't remember if it was very recently that I potted this up. Oh no, there's another one. Okay, so the next one for this. Sorry, just had a pause. Uh, my daughter's just come home from school. So, where was I? Okay, so up symbol, we've got one that's squeezing in there. Now that may or may not be it. So I knew there wasn't too many of them. Okay, that's all the ones of that that I can see so far. So we'll move on. So we've got an L, which is like a downwards L. Now, there is a few, but not too many of these if I remember rightly and it's frozen on me again okay so we'll start at the bottom here so we've got one going in there and it is so similar to the colours that are around it it really is ok 
okay and then in this little sort of cluster of the tree here I can see one there and then I can see one oh I can actually see two so we've got this little twin amount here twin amount me equals two symbols together is what I was trying to say so we've got that little two that I've just filled in there oh and it's just jumped on me uh, two that we've just filled in there and then according to this Okay, so I think I was on the wrong little two section. But I can't see where there's another one. Unless I filled in a little heart one in the wrong place, which would not be good. Okay, I'll just get out a little set of tweezers. Oh, no, I have not. So I actually had a heart symbol that hadn't been marked off. So by putting that one there, that is in the right place because I've got. Oh, no. Okay. I'm going to take that out just for a moment. Is that the same colour? No. Okay, so I'm looking in the wrong place. That's why. Okay, it's me. It's me. So I'm actually looking down here when actually where I've just placed it is up here, which actually in reference to everything else is right. And then the one that I'm looking for is actually that one there. Because I was too busy looking at this silly Mac that's deciding to save every time I want to do something or move around the PDF. So well and truly later I am going to see if I can split these pages up so that I don't have to go through this each time. So if you're thinking of using preview to highlight your chart as you go along my suggestion is either don't or um, come back when I have split the chart up into single pages and we'll see if it works any better. Okay, so I've just spotted another one which is actually up here, which is that one. Okay, can I see any more? Now, on the benefit of this, I can search for some of the symbols so that it highlights the symbols for me. However, it does quite often search the whole document. So splitting the pages will probably actually work really well. Okay, so I think that's it for that one. So we're gonna move on to now this little um, arrow symbol. It's like that, it's three, eight, five, nine. And okay, so I need one over here. And it saves. Okay, and I can't see any more on there at the moment, but I can see some S's and I can see quite a few. So what I'm going to do is I'm also going to keep these out. This is 350 and this actually has the dollar sign. I'm going to fill in a few of these as well while I'm here. And it will save me having to move about the chart maybe quite as much. Okay, so we have three in that bottom section. And if I have a look now compared to the ones that I've got, that bottom section is now completed of all the ones that I've had. I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to keep that there, which tells me exactly what colours they are. OK, 
Okay, so let's move up a section. Let's do it this way. So moving up a section, it's actually mainly the S that I need. And the first one does go all the way over here. And the next one is quite a way over. Over there. And it's France. Okay, so to move up this little cluster of three has one. And then I need an S where this two part is and then the arrow symbol actually goes here yeah so that's those two in that cluster so let's mark off the earth symbol and then mark off the arrow symbol. Let's see if it'll let me move over. Okay, so in this sort of section, I actually don't have any of the S symbol and I have one of the arrow. And I've got a little two at the side and then it's the next one tucked in. No, it's not that one, it's the one further down. This is why you'll find that I actually keep my pen quite often on the diamond once I've placed it and that is me referencing the chart again and checking that I have put it in the right place. Which in this instance it wasn't. Okay, so I'm just confirming all my symbols again before while the Mac saves. At least I think that's what it's doing. I'm not exactly sure if that's what it's doing, but it definitely seems to take its sweet time. Um, and it normally only does that when it's a big file, which this one is, um, because it's the full pattern. Okay, and then to move up, it's just showing that I need one more of the S symbol. And if I go up near the top and come down and across, it's this one here. Okay, so that's those two. I do like filling in these gaps, even if they are a little bit bitty. Um, I do like to be able to fill them in. It's like a little bonus se sense of accomplishment. Okay, and then we've got this pale blue, and this one is 932. And I know there's not many of these that I need either. So hopefully, this will let me move my chart in a moment. <coughs> And then I'll be able to have a proper look. Come on. Okay, so it's filled that one in. Okay, so I think this symbol is one of my very recent symbols because I'm actually only seeing one place on the chart that I need this. <laughs> But hey, one space filled is one space filled. And on here it's one, two, and then we go up, and then we go across, it's that one. There we go. So of the colours that I actually need now and have come across already, I do only have 10 that I don't have that are already in this design. So I think that is amazing and um, very impressed with that so 
so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see if I can split up this PDF document um, and come back and do a square with you um, and we'll see if this is going to work if not I'm going back to paper and we'll just do it the good old-fashioned way um, I'll just see how I can get this to work and come back Okay, so I've managed to save just page one um, of the pan. So let's see how that goes. So I'm going to tip out some 939s. Um, because I have now marked up my grid, I may end up going into more than one square um, because now I can count them across a lot easier. So first bit, I've just got a space of three. Plus I am finding now that the deeper and deeper I get into this, the less that I necessarily have such a big block of 939s like I did round some of these others. Um, so I am finding that it, you know the 939s are not necessarily there for reference as much as they were once. So. I'm just going to follow the pattern and move across. Now there have been a, quite a few comments um, on on my videos about Heaven and Earth Designs about a few people that that either may want to give this a go or maybe feel a little bit daunted by it, um, and. It, this type of, of diamond painting is not for everyone. Um, it really does, I mean, you'll know if it's something that you really want to give a go or if it's something that you know you'll be able to achieve. Um, I mean, the design that I have chosen is one of the biggest. Um, it, it's definitely one of the ones with the most colours because I've chose the max colour design. Um, so I do understand that I've not necessarily picked an easy example to show you all. Um, I used to cross stitch, I mean I still do, though not as much diamond painting seems to have taken over my life at the moment. Um, I used to cross stitch, um, so I am very much used to having, used to counting and and marking things up as I go and all the rest of it I am very much used to that so the likes of, of doing a heaven and earth designs really do not do not phase me at all sorry I've just opened up okay I'm trying to work out why it is not letting me highlight and keep the highlight on okay let's try that okay now it is it's because I'd selected something and then pressed on highlight it wasn't liking it so I'm having to click on my mouse when I'm wanting to highlight more than one um, in a row but I can double tap when I'm just highlighting one so that's the first sort of square now with the 939. So I am going to move on to the next one and we're going to see, as I say, how we can make this work. It will save me from potting and unpotting um, a lot more. And I have got the other symbols around as reference. Um, we'll see how many in a row I end up deciding to do. Because of course, as I've come down this row now, I'm sort of starting to hide my line. So things could get a little bit more blurry um, as it goes along. But we'll see how many I find I'm comfortable with. Um, so sorry, yeah, to get back on topic. There are a few people that have, you know, either said they're going to do it and then they've said, oh, actually, I'm not so sure. You know whatever works for you um, don't feel that just you know that you have to do it um, in no way do you have to do it if you're unsure just carry on with your normal diamond painting for a while 
and, and see how you feel as time goes on. Because it may well be that you, you know, realise that actually doing it this way is actually going to take some of the fun out of it for you. And that's definitely not what we want to happen. Um, if you have, have done cross stitch before, counting and, and marking your stitches is something that you'll be a little bit more familiar with and therefore you may decide that you want to do it. Um, though I would not do this design in a cross stitch. I would not want to do this design in a cross stitch at all. The, um, the max colour would have too many stitches that I would have to, um, you know, thread my needle, do a stitch, take it off my needle, wind it back on the bobbin, yeah. Um, I would not attempt to do um, max colour, not for this design definitely, it is very much confetti um, and apart from the likes of the 939 I am sure that I would get so annoyed <laughs> with re-threading um, my needle for each and every colour that is on this design. Um, diamond painting, yes. Would I do a cross stitch this big? In the past, yes. Um, whether I would now, I don't tend to find that I cross stitch as much as I used to. I tend to find that diamond painting has sort of taken that place. So I possibly would not um, do a cross stitch this big now, unless I really fell in love with the design and wanted it maybe in diamond painting and cross stitch. <laughs> Because, you know, if I fell, fell in love with the design that much, I'd want to cross stitch it. I'd want to diamond paint it, sorry. Um, so, yeah, you know, you'll know if a project's right for you. Heaven and Earth Designs do um, provide mini designs in charts, which are a lot smaller. So they may, may well be a lot more manageable for some people. Um, and therefore... If you're wanting to start out and you are a little bit unsure, maybe start with one of those smaller ones. See how it goes. But I am loving it. And I'm actually really liking the fact now I've been able to do four squares at once. <laughs> and we'll see what it's like in a bit when the uh, when I start filling in the gaps and I start losing my lines. Um, but at the moment, I'm I'm really liking the fact that I can sort of pour out quite a bit of one colour and just keep going um, I might work next time in a block of four squares this way that might be the way I work it um, or I may just continue to do sort of this sort of stretch but in two halves so one four section and another four section we'll see what takes my fancy when I get onto the next row so that I think is the 939's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to colour in these squares now. And this is highlighting and not coming up with the arrow a lot. This is doing it a lot better than it was. So I do think it was the size of the design. So if you do want to look at your chart in preview, if you do happen to have a Mac, and that's what you're using then what I did was I copied the document so I have two because of course I want to keep my original um, and then I've just deleted every other page on it and just kept page one so there we go that's my 939's done in bulk so what I'm going to do for the purposes of while I'm doing it this way um, is I'm going to move on to the next symbol that stands out. Um, I don't want to be, you know, pouring diamonds into, into my tray to do quite a few and then find out that I'm missing symbols. So the next symbol that stands out to me, well, there's a couple, um, but one of them is definitely the 535. It's more of a solid block symbol. And I'm still sort of working square by square but I'm filling in all on this square and then I'm going to move to the next square and up. Oh, 
my canvas is rolled up on my knee and every now and then it likes to slide out uh, so it's just save my save my canvas um so we've got two there and then we've got one sticking up on this corner down here one up here so that's sorted that square done now you may notice I do have a couple of different shades of um, 550 which is the color I'm working on now I do have a couple of different shades of it in this in this tub um, I'm not bothered which shade it is that I'm putting down because these two are two different shades but they're not right next to each other you're not really noticing and uh, once the design all comes together, I really don't think you're going to be able to tell. Okay, so I've done two sets, so I'm just going to do some double tapping and mark those off. So that I can move on to the next one. Because while this is quicker than pencil, I also don't want to be double tapping all the time. So we've got a cluster of three around here and that'll actually have a black in the middle. And then we've got two. And this is good because now I'm coming one in from this side. I'm not having to count all the way from where I've done other ones. And then we've got two down here, two spaces, one more, and then I also cross-reference it. So I've counted up from here to place the diamond, but then I'm also checking it against another one that's on the same row. It's a way of double checking that you have put it in the right place if it matches up both ways. We'll colour those in because there was quite a few. And then on the next page, there's not as many. So we've got one here, next page, next square, and one there. And then we've got a couple up here. And that's those. Okay. I felt like I got a lot more out of tipping them all out than I normally do. Okay, then we do have one, three, ten, but we've only got the one, so I am just going to pop in, it was in the third square, get that one done because it was not worth tipping a load out. And then there's a couple of other symbols that are jumping out at me now. One of them is three, three, seven, one. Now I do only have three, it was always going to tip out more than three because this pot is so full. It's got a little cluster of those, so it is all the dark sort of colours that I am putting on now, but then the pretty pinks and purples will come later. And then 902 like a deep burgundy and then we've got one here a lot of these are, are nestling in with ones that I've already placed so that definitely makes it easier to place them down is that it? I think it is No, it's not. There is one up there. Okay, so I've got the symbols now that sort of stand out at me and um, that are quite bold. Let's see if I can zoom you in for a bit of the, the next bit. You don't need to see me double tapping on my keyboard all the time. Let's see if we can zoom in there and then you can maybe see things at a different angle for a little while. So
so what I'm going to do, what I tend to do, um, I do this on my other diamond paintings as well. When I get to the point where there's not a symbol that's sort of jumping out as me as you need to do this, um, I tend to sort of start from a corner and just let the symbols guide me and fill in the rest as I go along. So that's what I'm going to do. So the first one I have now is 317. Now, I always end up tipping out more than I need, especially in this design. So the first one is here in that top corner. And then looking per square, I'm going to see if I can find any more. So that's it for that square. This one, I've got one here. And I've always got another one poised on my pen. I don't necessarily know if I'm going to need it. Um, it is easy enough to knock off the pen if I don't. Um, but it means that once I do locate one on the symbol chart, I'm not necessarily having to wait and then look at my tray and then go back to looking at the chart and go, oh, where was it? So, I've done that one. Okay, so that's them marked off for that. And I think that's them all. And then we actually have a white one now. At least close to white, 3865. I've only ever had one of them before. And this is, this is one that is rarely used. So I am just gonna have a brief look and see whether it is worth tipping them out. And I don't think it's going to be. Not that I can see, so I'm just gonna Maybe I should try the search feature. Let me try if I... Uh, see, to search for it, I'm then going to have to um, untick the highlighter pen, which would drive me batty doing that back and forth. So we'll ignore that. We'll just keep using my eyes. Okay, so we've got number three, and this is 386. 3836. It's like a, a dusky pink, I'd say. And I do have a few different shades of this one as well. But I'm okay with that. So I'm going to mark off that square. And what I'm actually doing while I'm marking off the square, my eyes are scanning that square just to check if there are any more before I move on to the next one. And then in the next square, we've got three. What I quite often do is also count how many single stitches I've done. So in regards to this one, I'm like one, two, three, which means when I go to mark it off, I'm also marking off one, two, three. Now, while I was placing down the number three in here, I have spotted another white. So what I'm going to do while I know where the tub is without having to look for it is I'm just going to grab it straight and place that symbol and pretend I never missed it. Um, okay, and then in the next square I don't have any and in the far square I've only got one. Unless of course I've missed some. But that's a whole different matter. So that was number three. And then we've got um, 823, which I know this one. And this one is the little TM symbol, trademark symbol. This one can be quite easy to miss. But we're still working along this sort of top row. But I'm again going to go square by square. So there's two more there. Oh, three. Two, three. Four. Okay, so I've placed five, including the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, as I mark them off. See, it's not only just counted cross stitches, it's counted everything. Okay, and then the next one, I've got one, and that's the only one I can see. OK, 
okay. My Mac just did the whirly thing then as well to show that it was saving super quick. So definitely if you are going to be working on a Mac on preview, split your document up, otherwise it doesn't like it. <laughs> Does not like it at all. Okay, so now we've got one. This colour is so similar to 939, it's unreal. Sometimes I feel as though I could have just stuck a 939 there and been done with it. So that was three, four, Oh. Five. Oh, and I didn't do that top one either. Six. Okay, so one, two, three, four. And that's all of those. I've just found a couple that stuck together and won't come apart, so we'll throw them in the trash. Okay. Now the next symbol that I've come across on this line is one that I've not had before. Um, so it will be one I'll need to reference the sheet for. And while I was looking at that, I've spotted that I missed a TM on the first page. Doesn't take much. Okay, so the next say the next one along on here um, is one that I know I don't have. So I'm gonna move on and go for the next one, which I do have, and it always takes me a bit to find. Uh, 3721. I don't have many of them, that's practically the tub empty, um, but I don't, I haven't found that I've needed many so far. This is one that I think I only need one or two in the whole of this row. That's yet, I'm only fine. Oh no, there's one more. So there's two. There's the third. amazing how familiar I do get though Ooh, this tub's quite full um, it's amazing how familiar I do get with the symbols and where they are placed um, but I have found that by getting the symbols together as you go along so as I come across it putting it up I found has helped greatly I think if I'd have potted up all 239 colours right from the beginning and labelled all of my tubs right from the beginning, I think I wouldn't have got the familiarity I have at the moment. I'm adding to my memory banks the colours little bit by little bit rather than going, have all these symbols, try and learn them. <laughs> I find it definitely helps this way. Okay, so we've probably got quite a few of these. This is 3834. I have found that I've used quite a lot of this colour recently. So I am going to tip out a few. Okay, sorry, my memory card got full. Um, I have placed a few diamonds in between, um, not many though, but what I've also done is as I've come to sort of the end of a, of a line of 10 following my pattern, is I did go and find that missing um, diamond to see whether I had it. So I did, it was 3805. Um, I need the grand sum of 28 on the whole of this canvas, but hey, I've placed one. Um, and then what I'm going to do is rather than going all the way across is I'm just going to concentrate 
on the next colours in this 10 by 10 grid and then I'll move across. Of course, they'll get less and less as I go along. So the next one on this is 3041 and I do have a few of these scattered about. So we'll, it's like a dark plummy type colour. Um, and then it's this one. So that gap there is actually from the previous square. And then we took one up in here. It's quite nice when you start filling them in because you, you're just working out where you're tucking them in relation to the others. So that's quite nice. So that's that square done. And then on the next one, oh, there is a few on this one. It's really weird. When you first look, you don't, uh, quite often I don't think there's any. And I'm like, oh, there's none. And then as soon as I see one, I see a load. <laughs> so we've got two across from there. And then one from here. And that also matches up going down as well. So we'll mark those three off. And then we actually have one next to it on this square. This one. Got one at the top. So I'm going to mark those three off because there is quite a few more that I can see on this one. So I'm going to mark the three that I've just done. And then we've got one there. One down the bottom. So that's three more placed, four in this square, and then one up here is five. So then I'm making sure that I'm marking off five of them. Oh, that's right. And the next square, we've got a few more. Oh, oh, oh. Didn't want to pick that one up. Five again. Two, three, four. There's the fifth. I lost the fifth on the chart then, but I've definitely placed it on here. So yeah, that's my next colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plod on on this on my own now um, for a bit. And then I might come back near the end of this section and sort of show you what it looks like. So see you in a bit. Okay, so I'm just on this last sort of section here. Um, and to be honest, most of the ones that I need to put in here are ones that I've missed. Um, as I've sort of gone round, um, it's the odd, odd colour that I've just missed that symbol. Um, so I'm just going to pop these in. Um, I have got a few gaps in this one. I have got a couple more pots that I've had to create um, for symbols that I've needed. But I have also had a couple more colours that have been introduced um, and I've actually had the pots had the colors sorry so um it's quite nice when that happens and you sort of get to fill get to fill another little pot up and you know you've got the color so i've just got one more to do on here which is a question mark um question mark the right way up i also have a question mark the wrong way up um so let's just fill in this last one which is 819 which is a really pale pink and that is that section completed and we're really really starting to see the top of the tree now which i like um i've got four more sections going down now this last section i only have part of it on the first page um and i have cut the of course the the contact paper into a strip um ready so i'm not sure whether i will either leave that section off or I might just do it and then leave the gap across the bottom. I'm not quite sure yet. I haven't quite decided. So I'm just going to mark that symbol off. So I've got a few spaces. Um, in this last square, 
I only ended up with two. In this square, I ended up with five. In this one, four. And in the first square, two. So, um, not too bad for square gaps. It's definitely getting better. So, thank you so much to um, Elaine for, for contributing those spares. I'm sure one of the new ones I've potted up was also one of the colours that you sent me. So, I wouldn't have been able to do that if you hadn't. I've just knocked one out. So, I'm just going to push that back in but I've been able to look on my chart and see where it is that that needed to go I have got a space next to it um, so yeah that's all I'm going to do on this for today um, once I have got to the end of the first page I am going to sort of press this down with a rolling pin and all that sort of stuff um, to make sure that all that I have done is set in um, and then we'll move across and hopefully start to see a bit more of the tree. So thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you all again soon.